Hello, and welcome back to MyBibleRegistration.com. I'm Minister Love, and here we are on lesson number 11. And again, we're on this wonderful series talking about my what? Well, today, we're going to be talking about my house. That's right, my Ooh. house. Thank you for joining us uh, today, Sister Sandy, Sister Gina, and Sister Cherokee, and most of all, you two audience, for following us on this wonderful series for this year. So with that being said, when we think of the word house, right away comes to mind is a physical building, isn't it? My mm -hmm. house. You know, we're very protective of our houses, aren't we? Especially if we got a mortgage on it. You know, we got a mortgage on that house. Boy, you you, you want to make sure everything is taken care of. You, know, you want to try to uh, keep that house in perfect tip-top condition because it's the value is going to be important to you. But more so than a physical house, we got a spiritual house that we must also pay attention to as well. Many of us keep our physical house in tip-top condition and we let go of our spiritual house. So today we're gonna to look at some scriptures and we're gonna see some individuals that's talking about my house. What's happening in my house? You know, you can be in a neighborhood, you can live next door to someone and you think everything is rosy, peachy hey. and inside of that house is chaos. It is, it is a war zone, but outside it looks good. So let's see what's mm -hmm. happening with these individuals when we go into their house. So this is my house. All right, then. We're going to have the first scripture here today. Sister uh, Gina is going to open this up. Read for us Genesis chapter 15. And we're going to take a look at verses 2 and 3, please. The key phrase today, everyone, is my house. That's what you look for in the text. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Mm. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, the one born in my house is my heir. So we got Abraham talking, and he's talking to God because God is promising him a son, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's where he's going. And he's like, I, I don't. I don't have a son, so there's no heir in my house. So he's talking about his household, but he's also talking about his family line. He has yes. nobody to carry on his name. Right. Mm -hmm. There you go, Gina. That's it. That's what I wanted to hear. So he's really giving us a picture of two houses. His physical house, because, I mean, they're, they're in his house having this conversation, right? But he went deeper than that. It's spiritual, because... Your children is the picture of your house, your household. Your kids make up your household. So Abram is saying, this Eliezer, he ain't really of my house. You know, he's really not mm -hmm. the heir, the legitimate heir. So God had to make a way for Abram's, my house, to be legitimate. And that's why Isaac came into play. Because your house represents your genealogy. You ever notice when people have a home, a physical home, they normally like to leave that house to their children, don't they? And their children pass it on to somebody else because that's my house. It's a generational thing. So there it is, Abram. We got this, we went inside of his house to see what kind of conversation Abram was having. What kind of conversation would God hear if he came into my house? Wow. What a picture, huh? Let's take a, take a look at the mm -hmm. next text. I think we're going to have Sandy take us over to the book of Ezekiel. Sandy, where are we going? Ezekiel what? One. Eight, uh, one. Eight, chapter one. Eight, chapter eight, verse one. Yes. Amen. All right. Okay. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Is this Ezekiel? He's having a vision that th this is going to take place with the elders and him, and and um, the, God will fall upon them because they're. Um, let's see. Uh, they're like in the inner court of the temple, and um, preparing a place for them, and that 
um, God is, will fall upon them and so that they will uh, start to, to envision him differently because as we study in the Old Testament, there's always where they believe and then they don't believe. And um, that's kind of what I got. I'm kind of not totally clear on that one. Uh, okay. All right. Well, you, you, you're you on the right track there. That's why Minister okay. Love is here. I pick up the puzzle okay. pieces and put them together. <laughs> All right. Then. Okay. So notice where we are. That's, that's what I love about the Bible. Notice where you are you're in the book of what? Ezekiel. We know he's a what? Prophet. And again, okay. just like all the prophets, they're trying to tell the people of Israel what they're doing wrong. So now they're coming out of uh, Babylonian captivity around about that time. And so now you got Ezekiel, the prophet, and he's coming now to bring a message. And so he's sitting before he has the elders coming before him. You know, the elders got to listen to what the prophets has to say. So and where did they go? Did you notice what Ezekiel said? They sat where? In his house. So what's happening in Ezekiel's house? It's enough that we know that a prophet talks for God, but he has a house. Prophets live in homes. So there was a conversation going on. He brought the elders in his house. And what did he do in his house? What did he say? He says, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me. Uh-oh, what happened? The hand of the Lord fell upon him. You don't need to go to church for God's hand to fall upon you. His hand, oh, his hand to fall upon you in my house, my house. You don't need to be nowhere else. God can do for you in your own house if you're willing to listen. You got to be open. You don't have to go here and go there. Sometimes you need to stay in your own house and God will speak to you right there. The hand of the Lord came to the prophet and, and you know he had witnesses. Because the elders of Judah was there. What? Wow. I bet you when they left Ezekiel's house, I bet you they was running scared. They were shaking in their knees. They probably said, I don't want to go back to Ezekiel's house. I don't want to go back to this. No, 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 no. no. Well, uh, if, if he had some if he had some fried chicken and some pig feet and collard greens, I think I'm going to Ezekiel's house. <laughs> Woo! Oh, come on. Oh, right. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So there's a lot going on in these individuals' houses. We saw Ab uh, we saw what happened in Abram's house. Uh, and we uh, we saw what happened it right now in Ezekiel's house. Let's take a look mm -hmm. at the last scripture. I believe Cherokee is gonna close us out. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. And we're gonna take a look at verse 30. Hey, and Cornelius. Cornelius said four days ago until this hour, I was keeping the ninth hour of prayer in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in a bright uh, appeal. Wait. Apparel. Apparel. Mm hmm. Mm. What's happening here? Oh, it's kind of like all over the place. Um, First of all, who's the scripture talking about? Who's speaking? Let's start there. What's his name? Uh, the cor Cornelius. Cor Cornelius. Uh-huh. And where is Cornelius? Um, where is he at? He's in his what? In his house. There you go. So now we got Cornelius' house. Let's take it there. What's happening in Cornelius' house in that text, Cherokee? What's happening? What is he doing? Um, a prayer. Uh, uh keeping praying. the ninth hour of praying okay prayer. he's praying and what else is doing is he doing what else is he doing uh, there's a man before me in bright apparel okay what does that mean okay something else i saw before that did you notice okay. that what he was doing in his house he was fasting mm. and praying mm. oh, wait a minute now here's cornelius who is a roman satyrian soldier and he's fasting and praying, wow. this wow. is the enemy to the Jews. But he's mm. fasting and praying in his house. See what I'm saying? You could be working for the enemy, but on in your house, you're serving God. Hmm. Amen. Oh, and when he did that, what happened? Somebody appeared to him. What? In a bright yep. apparel clothing. Oh my God. Yep. What happens when you pray? What happens when you fast? It ain't about just losing weight when you're fasting. Something, re mm -mm. something revelation ought to happen in your life. When Amen. you pray, 
and you fast. You don't need to get in your car and drive somewhere, go thousands and thousands of miles somewhere to get to, to fast and pray. You can pray and fast in your own house Amen. and watch what God will do Dude. in my yep. house. Too yep. many of us, too many of us, we want to be in everybody's house, do stuff in everybody's house, but we ain't doing nothing in our own house. On. We're missing what God is doing in our own house. Mm -hmm. He did it for Abram. He did it for Ezekiel. And now we're seeing it right here in the book of Acts. What's happening with Cornelius in my house. Wow. What a wonderful uh, lesson on today. Thank you all. Thank you again for this great lesson on today where we're talking about my what? Well, today was my house. What's going on in your house? And it's not maybe just your physical house, but what's going on in your heart? That's your house. That's your spiritual house. What's happening in your heart? Who are you listening to? What are you putting in? Who are you inviting in your house? Who's your company? Who's bringing you dinner? Who's bringing you something to drink? And I ain't talking about fried chicken and potato, potato salad. I'm talking about doctrine. What are they saying to you? What word are you listening to? All right, then. God bless you. Thank you for another great lesson. Hey, listen, we want you to tune in next week. We got another great lesson coming right up here on MyBibleRegistration.com. God bless you all. Take care.